Good morning, Saturday the 5th of April 2014. I got the date wrong on the uh, on the Facebook uh, post a little bit earlier on, didn't I? Sorry about that. All fixed now. It's Saturday the 5th of April, which means it's someone's birthday today, boys and girls. Little Sean Riches is 90 years... I beg, I beg your pardon. 19 years old this morning. Happy birthday, Sean. One minute, wait, one minute, one minute. Here it is, here it is. <laughs> Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday dear little Sean, happy birthday to you. Yes, business tycoon and mogul, Sean Riches is 19 today, owner of Sean Riches Mobile Discos, He's got the um, the bouncy castle, the popcorn machine, driving lessons. Sean does everything. If you need anything done at all, Sean is the bo- man now. Sean is the man for you. Happy birthday, Sean. And do let us know what sort of little excitement you'll be receiving for Christmas for uh, birthday presents today. What have you got your mum? What have you what have you managed to, to con out your mother and father, eh? Do let us know. <laughs> now, there's an email address if you want to join in at any time, uh, whether you're with, with us live. Uh, oh, and uh, a very good uh, morning or evening, depending on what time you're listening. Uh, to those of you listening and uh, uh, on UK Health Radio as well. OK, um, we have an email if you want to join in at any time. My email address is chris at United Kingdom Talk. Dot co dot uk right chris at united kingdom talk dot co dot uk whether you're watching a recording or watching us live or listening live or listening to a recording that is how to get into contact at any time now um if you are with us live and it's just coming up to four minutes past 12 o'clock on saturday the 5th of april 2014 then you can join in live by two method three methods either the email or I've got Skype. My Skype username is, all one word, Chris Reardon. C-H-R-I-S-R-E-A-R-D-O-N. All right, Chris Reardon. Or you can use a local London phone number, 20 8133 Okay, 20 8133 Now, just so that you know, if I'm on a call with someone, you won't be able to get through. No one else will answer the phone, only me. It's sad, old me, because I'm all here alone. There, there aren't. I know sometimes I've lied to you, boys and girls. <laughs> oh, I've lied. Another mortal sin in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Ten how Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. I know uh, that sometimes I have said, you know, I've got banks of operators standing by next door for your calls. It's lies. Okay? It's me. It's me. I push a button, your call comes straight through, and that's it. Now and again... People try to trip me up. They did last week, didn't they? I do believe someone attempted attempted to say something rude on my show. But my finger was poised, boys and girls. It was poised. My, my finger was poised on the button, waiting, waiting for that naughty word. And I cut them off before. So you can try that. You'll only get one shot, you know. You'll have to be very, very quick. you get one shot at that. Because once I've taken a call, that's the end of it. Thank you. Uh, also, we've got to have say hello this morning to Vibes Essex, a little radio station down there in Essex. Good morning, all of you lot. Um, who else have we got here today? Uh, Wendy. Good morning, Wendy. She's with us nice and early. Wendy is my Manilow friend. Not long now to the Barry Manilow uh, concerts. OK, I'm going twice on the 13th of May to... Oh, which one's that? Ah, oh, my tickets are here. My Barry Manilow tickets are here. I can't remember which is which now. 13th of May and the 26th of May. 13th of May is... The... Oh, hang on. Where's the tickets? <gasps> oh, they're still in the envelope. Thank God for that. Hang on. 13th of May is... 13th of May is Wembley and 26th of May is the O2. So I'm going twice to that and not long now. Just a few weeks away. I can't believe, like, it was it back in November or October that I bought these tickets? And I'm taking uh, my niece and two of my aunties, Auntie Brenda and um, Auntie um, uh, Rini. We have, of course, 
the new April Barry Manilow picture behind us. I, I must I must make a small observation about the Barry Manilow cal calendars. The photos are fantastic. The printing is fantastic. But there is a little hole at the top. The idea is you, you hang it on this hole. It's really not very strong. In fact, it's already broken. And I've had to tape... I, what I've had to do is get my... um. Hole, you know those hole punches. I've got one of those hole punches, and I've had to punch another hole, sort of halfway, a little bit further across, and and, and reuse it like that because the hole is not strong enough. Do you know what I mean, Wendy? I hate that when you come across something with not a very strong hole, and you can't do anything with it. You know, you try and something tears. Oh, it's so annoying. So annoying. So a little criticism. I hope you don't mind me, Wendy, because we don't like people criticising Barry Manilow. I gather uh, Brandon, is that right? Young Brandon in, in that dump of a place called Croydon. What a dump. Brandon lives in Croydon. Jesus Christ. You don't want to go out there once it gets dark in Croydon. And they've got an Ikea there. I went once, never again. Oh, it's like a mad place. It's for mad people all queuing up for endless hours trying to purchase things. Is it like that in all Ikeas? Huh? Well, you're trying to buy something. You just seem to be queuing up for ages trying to get hold of something. In Ikea. They've got one of those in Croydon. Can't remember how to get to it. But Brandon lives there. And um, Brandon, I, I, I do f believe you said something geography, geography about our Barry Mandalow. Is that right, Brandon? I'm not quite sure what you said. Can you remind me, please, Wendy, so that I can remind him again and we won't let it go? Uh, I'd also like to say hello to a lot of people today. Um top few countries that listen to this show at uh, Mexico. Good morning to anyone in Mexico, or good afternoon rather. Uh, good afternoon to anyone in Argentina, Brazil, United Kingdom, Turkey, Russia, Colombia and the Ukraine. They're the top places where people watch this show. Funny, isn't it? Mexico. Hungry, hungry, eager, eager, eager. Is that it? The little Mexican, you know, the mouse. So if you are in Mexico, then a warm welcome along to you. Perhaps you'd like to write in and tell tell us why you decided to watch or listen to this show. I'd be I'd be amazed. Either Mexico, Argentina, Brazil, indeed any other countries, wherever you are. What what? How did you find the show, and why why are you watching it? Do let us know. Are you watching it maybe to learn English? And of course, we have our American friends with us as well. They're always here. Uh, I don't know if Millie is with us today. Millie. Motorised Millie. Now, Millie um, is a great friend of the show. I've known her for years now, only through this show. I've met her uh, twice. And I'm going to meet her again Monday because Millie, and known, known as Motorised Millie, because Millie has cerebral palsy and uh, she has spent her life in a wheelchair. And that's why I called her Motorised Millie because she pushes a button and whoosh, off she goes. Whoosh, like that. <laughs> very, very fast, Millie, in that wheelchair. You'll never catch her, I'll tell you that now. And she's over here in the UK at the moment, and I'm going to meet her on Monday for dinner. I've taken a night off Monday just to meet, meet Millie. And uh, she's at a very posh hotel, the, well, what was it now? The Waldorf Hilton Hotel. That sounds really posh. I haven't looked it up on the internet. Yeah, you know, I'm. Yeah, you know, I might buy. I don't know what you think. I might buy. Oh, when did when did you just said? Have you been talking to me? I clicked the wrong praise and closed you down. Back now. You are too rough with that hole. Um, do you think so? Is that what it is? Well, look, I can. I'm not going to take it off because the other hole will break. I've been a bit rough with the Barry Manilow hole. I think. And it's and it's pardon, and it <laughs> and it's broken. So I've I've given Barry Manilow a new hole in the top, and that seems to be working at the moment. I thought, do you think is that what it is? The same thing happened to the other one, Wendy. The hole broke within two months. I mean, they need a little. You know those little things. I think you can buy a little um, hole uh, strengtheners, can't you? Which is like a little circle thing with a bit, of, and you lick the back, and you just stick it on, and it makes your hole nice and strong again. We can't be having ripped holes here. We really can't. Anyway, Wendy, yes, I was just mentioning Brandon, our friend Brandon in Croydon, and he said something derogatory about Barry once, didn't he? And I was trying to remember what it was so that we can remind him, and he won't forget again, and perhaps he won't do it again as well. 
<laughs> I'm so naughty. Now, where was I? We were going in another direction and then I came back to Wendy. What was I talking about, someone? Quickly remind me. <laughs> uh, we've done, we done Barry Manley. We've done Sean. We've done Sean. Oh, Sean. That's what I meant to say. Sean has told me, actually reminded me. I, and I don't mind a little... Oh, that, that's it. That's it. Yes, uh, countries that you're listening to. Uh, and Millie, I'm going to meet Millie at the Waldorf Hilton Hotel on Monday night. This is very exciting. Not only that, and I spoke to her the other day, and uh, she says, uh, we know you're vegetarian, so no problem at all there. So that's very nice, isn't it? You know, she, she's thought of that. Millie is a very thoughtful person. I thought she might be with us today. On the other hand, you know, she's come on holiday year. She's not going to be sitting in a hotel watching a laptop, is she, for this show? <laughs> so hopefully I'll take my little camera along with me on the, or, or the iPhone. All the short videos I did, I don't know if I've told you before, I actually film on the iPhone. I mean, the camera is that good, because I do do a couple of short videos during the week. I don't do them every day now. I found they started taking up a lot of my time. Um, so I do them now and again. This week, I did... Um, I did the garden, planting the potatoes, and one with my um, uh, cousin, because I met up with my cousin this week. Oh, we had a wonderful time. We went to Brooklyn's Museum, which is in Weybridge in Surrey. And it's got in there all old planes. And we went on Concord. Oh, it's fantastic. You've got to watch that video because I actually show you on Concord. Now, this is actually a Concord test plane. It's a real Concord. OK, and you go up the steps and you sit in the seats. And, oh, it's fantastic. You've got to go there. If you come to the UK, go to Brooklyn's Museum. Also in there, they've got all old buses. And old motorbikes and various other methods of transport. Fantastic. That's the Brooklyn's Museum in Weybridge. You'll need or oh, you'll need a whole day there. I was only there a couple of hours and I was disappointed that I had to leave to, to get ready for my karaoke later. And if you like transport, of course, there's the London Transport Museum. I'm not sure. I think that's in... Um, that's not in Cyan Park anymore. That's it. Is it in Covent Garden, the London Transport Museum? I think that might be, might be where that one is. Yes, the London Transport Museum in Covent Garden. So a couple of things to, to, for you to do if you're ever in London. Uh, but basically, my cousin is over from Australia with his two children, uh, Naomi and Julian. What well-behaved, nice children they were. Really nice pair of children. Wonderful. And Simon, my cousin, was there as well. They're all over, over from Australia. Uh, also living near Weybridge is my aunt and uncle Terry and Marion and cousin Helen. And so we all met up and we went to the Brooklyn Museum and I had a lovely couple of hours. They were there the whole day, of course, but um, I was a bit disappointed that was only there two hours. But I had to get home uh, ready for work later. A fantastic day out if you ever want to do anything like that. But to actually go on a Concorde. Wow. I mean, wow. I was blown away. I tell you, it didn't appear to be a very comfortable plane. I mean... Admittedly, you're only on there three hours going to New York, aren't you? Or, or you used to be before they uh, shut it down about 13 years ago. Um, but uh, for those three and a half hours, not much room at all to move. You've got quite a bit of leg room, but you're very squashed. There's only four seats, you know. One, two, uh, aisle, one, two. That's it. It's like a long tube. And I thought, oh, I wouldn't be comfortable on that. And we saw the flight deck with all the dials and everything. Oh, so much equipment on this flight deck. Brooklyn's Museum in Weybridge in Surrey. Fantastic. And if you want to have a look, look at the video of that when we finish the show today, you can find that. Uh, go to my YouTube page, youtube.com forward slash Chris Reardon UK. And look for the video dated Monday the 31st of March two thousand. And 14, all right? And you'll see a little, I think it's about a five-minute video on there of that. So uh, that was, I mean, it was really good. No, sorry, no. Tuesday the 1st of April. Tuesday the 1st of April 2014 is that video, okay? Because we went on the Monday and I, I did the video on the Tuesday. So, or, or put it all together on the Tuesday. Other video this week uh, was me planting potatoes in the old garden. That was... 
was that Thursday? Thursday the 3rd of April 2014. And once again, you'll find all my short videos at youtube.com forward slash Chris Reardon UK. Uh, Wendy says, I can't remember what Brandon said, to be honest. Oh, we must try and remember and keep reminding him how nasty it was about our Barry. Not long now, Wendy. Looks like we made it. Yes. Uh, good morning to Gary Davidson. Good morning, Gary. I can't remember where you are. Who loves the shirt? Do you like this one? My orange Belisha Beacon shirt. I might go walking along the road later and I'm determined not to get run over. It's a bright orange coloured shirt I'm wearing, those of you just listening this morning. Uh, Ralph Lauren, which I bought from the States, America. Very cheap. I wouldn't buy a Ralph Lauren shirt here. Not the blood and prices they play, like, that they charge here for that sort of thing. But when you go to America, you bring back clothes because it's nice and cheap. And we like that. Good morning to... Oh, look who it is. Is that Dan Wood? Daniel. Now, which Daniel is this who we've got with us this morning? Good morning, Daniel. I'm not quite sure which Daniel you are. Because if it's Dan Wood, I'm coming to a story on you in a minute. Oh, yes. And West Five, where I used to work. Oh, you'll love that, you'll love that when we get to that one. Good morning to Mark Whittle. Good morning, Mark, who said, Where is your show and tell, t show and tell item in the background? Well, actually, it's here. I've got something, because I always have something to show you today, don't I? Um, I? I used to have something in the corner. Each week I try, I look around my house thinking, what can I show you today? And today it's my new Bluetooth headphones. Look at that. No wires. How fantastic about that. And these are used with my iPhone 5. iPhone 5. And it's just fantastic. No, no wires at all. How much were these? Oh, are you ready for this? Free of charge. Oh, we like free. Cling! We do like free of charge, boys and girls. We absolutely love free of charge. These, um, where I go swimming up at the uh, Hilton Hotel, they've got a, a smallish size pool there. And I do 60 lengths in there generally, Monday to Friday. Um, they did this refer a friend thing. So, I, Daniel, which Daniel are you? I'm not quite sure which one you are. Come back to me and tell me. Um, they did this find a friend, not find a friend. They did this refer a friend thing. So I, I knew Ronnie wanted to join up. So I referred him, you see. And then uh, you get this leaflet, this leaflet with a number on it. And you go on the website and they say, what prize would you like? And there were various different things, flowers and things like that. And there were a pair of Bluetooth headphones. And I've got these. It says on it KS on the side, which I thought, I thought that was some sort of skin disease. KS, isn't it? <laughs> oh, I hope I don't get that one. Christ. <laughs> I've been, been quite lucky so far with anything. You know, oh, I wish I hadn't said that now because I've got my scan this week on my throat. Oh, when's that? Friday. They're going to do... Uh, no, not a scan. I've had the scan already and I can't see anything on there. So that's good news. But um, I've got this throat problem that I've had now since January. And oh, I'm gonna am I going to sneeze? One minute. Oh. I'm here. Oh, I can't do it now. Oh. Come on, sneeze, sneeze. It's not going to happen, is it? No. It's not going to happen. Let me just put those headphones on there. Yeah, I've got this throat complaint on the side there that I, I, I got. Certainly, when I hit a certain frequency when I'm talking or singing or something like that, and it's loud, it something something in there, there's something in there that comes across, and then when I shut up, it moves out of the way again. So I'm sure they will know what it is. Um, I don't think it's... I hope it's not serious. Um, but there we are. Uh, good morning, Daniel. Daniel is in Camberley. Oh, you're local. I'm only in Bracknell. Uh, do you like the studio, Daniel? <laughs> People people have come here before and they're so disappointed because it's only tiny. It's about one, it's about one, it's about two and a quarter metres wide. I could say so the camera's at one end and the microphone and me are at the other end. So it's about two and a quarter metres wide and one, two, I suppose about four metres long. It's It's the small bedroom, OK, that I've done out. It's a tiny little studio. Hello, Daniel. Welcome, Daniel, in Camberley. Nice part of the world. Now, Camberley is not, it's not like Croydon. Croydon is a dump. I'm sorry, Brandon. Croydon's a dump. Camberley is nice. They've got, um, what's that name of that shopping centre there? But it's very nice and white and clean. 
the shopping centre. It's quite white, the way it's been painted. Very clean in Camberley. Very expensive. More expensive in Camberley, I'm afraid, than Bracknell. It's true. That, that's all it is. And they've got a great big massive Marks and Spencers and a huge massive Tesco's. And I'm not sure, is that Tesco's the biggest one in the country, the one in Camberley? I think it might be. And do they have a bit? They have a a B and Q, and it's not far from here at all. I've gone shopping there sometimes. And if you go in Tesco's, then upstairs they've got a wonderful little restaurant, and there's all sorts of things to eat up there. Not many for us vegetarians, unfortunately, eh? <laughs> Daniel is loving the studio. Glad you like it, Daniel. It's only a few little curtains and bits and pieces that are put together. Uh, Mark says the London Transport Museum is indeed in Covent Garden. So, yes, if you're ever visiting London, whether you're, you know, from another country or, or you're in this country, highly recommend the London Transport Museum. I do like transport. I really do like transport. Good morning this morning to uh, Craig Adams. Morning, Craig. How are you, sir? He does the hospital radio up there in uh, Hinkley which is a little bit up north sometimes. Uh, also, the, oh, the, the other thing that happens to my throat sometimes um, is that the voice goes. Now, today, it's OK. Right? Today, it's OK. But this thing is definitely affecting um, uh, the way I talk sometimes and uh, that, that w when I hit the frequency. So e even now, I can si sort of slightly detect that there's something wrong. If I put my hand there, right, that side of it is up a bit. That side is not up at all. So there's definitely something going on there. Could be an infection, couldn't it? Although uh, the last time I went to see the doctor about it, he did put me on these antibiotics. Great big bloody tablets they were. I thought they were supposed to go up the other end at one point. I really did. <laughs> Perhaps I should have tried that. <laughs> I swallowed these tablets for two weeks and they didn't make any difference at all, unfortunately. Uh, yes, Craig is here. He's here today until I finish. Well, we are, we do 57 minutes now, uh, Craig. We do 57 minutes because certain other... Uh, there's a, a, a little radio station now that uh, likes to play the show out, UK Health Radio. Uh, indeed, if you ever wanted to play the show out on your hospital radio uh, up there in Hinkley, that's OK. You don't need permission. Just take it. Take it off the website. Any other little radio stations that might want to take the show, uh, I try and make it now exactly 57 minutes long, OK, uh, for uh, the other station. So you can have that if you want. And you'll find the audio version at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk, right? unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Just download the show and play it out. You know, let me know you're going to do it if you don't mind, but you don't need permission or anything like that. I'm quite happy if have anyone to share the stuff that I do. Um, there is an email from Craig. I'll read you out in a second. I was just going to go back to uh, Sean's birthday today. Sean is 19 today. So he's going for his birthday to one of my favourite places in the whole wide world, the Toby Carvery. Which one are you going to, Sean? We want to know which uh, Toby Carvery you go to. I generally go to the one in... Frim, there's one in Frimley, I think, uh, one in Slough, and one in Caversham. Three carveries that I go to. Of course, I'm vegetarian, so I don't eat meat. Um, at these carveries, they always do do a vegetarian option. And I mentioned this a few weeks ago. I found, you know, cause, so, so you go in this carver, you can have a choice of three meats. It's usually, I think it's turkey, beef, and... Is it ham, the other one? Turkey, beef and ham. OK, so you've got three meats there. You get the choice of having one, two or, or, or a slice of each of them. You can have whatever you want. Uh, so you just have that. And then you just keep helping yourself to the vegetables. Now, obviously, I don't have the meat. Right. So what I was finding I was doing is going to the plate, going straight to the vegetables, piling those. I mean, piling, piling. Loads of roast potatoes and all that. Then going to sit down and then ordering the, the vegetarian option. I actually found that was too much. Because once you'd had all those vegetables, you didn't want to eat anything else. So I stopped having the vegetarian option. And you can get a massive plate of vegetables and beautiful roast potatoes. I don't know how they cook them. The beautiful, beautiful roast potatoes they do in Toby Carvery are just to die for. 
I don't know if they fry them or they do something to them, but they are just to die for. I have a great bit. I have, I have, I have what's on my plate. Then I go back for some more. Oh, and a Yorkshire pudding I have as well. So I stopped having the vegetarian option and only had the vegetables, and that was enough. Although we always found time, it's usually my mate Ron that comes with us, we always found time for one of those cheap old ice creams afterwards with butterscotch topping. <gasps> oh, to die for. Absolutely to die for. Although I'm not having any of that at the moment. As you know, I've been on a diet. I have now lost 11 pounds. 11 pounds since the beginning of Lent. No potatoes, no bread, no sweets, no chocolates, no cakes. 11 pounds in weight. Can't lie to you, this week the weight hasn't changed. But the trousers have become looser. Indeed, you know those pairs of... <laughs> oh, it's just a joke, isn't it, really? You know those pairs of Ralph Lauren jeans I bought from the States? Too big now. <laughs> you can't win, can you? However, I've got some other jeans that I keep. I tend to keep all my old stuff. And um, I've gone back down a size in those. But they, too have become looser this week. So I'm quite pleased at becoming loose. Sorry, I'm quite pleased that, <laughs> that stop it, that the genes have become looser on me. There we are. <clears throat> Want to lose weight? Knock out those things. You still feel hungry? Have an apple. Gotta say, when I first started replacing the cakes and all that with apples, I looked at this apple and thought, oh God, look at that. This green round thing sitting there in front of me. Do I? And, but now I quite enjoy an apple. Now the only thing is they they seem to hurt my teeth a little bit. So you want to lose some weight? That's it. Cut out potatoes and anything to do with them. Chips, crisps. You know what I mean. Cut out the potatoes, all the bread, all the cakes, and all the sweets. That's it. <clears throat> Yesterday, I must admit, I have had the occasional bit of ice cream. And I was up at Waitrose yesterday, the preferred supermarket of United Kingdom talk. Waitrose, the preferred supermarket. Lots of little Waitroses opening everywhere now. Have you noticed that? Little Waitrose. What a fantastic name. Who came up with that? Little Waitrose. That's got a real English feel to it, isn't it? Little Waitrose. I love it. Little Waitrose. So much better than to Tesco Metro. Or Sainsbury's, what are they? Sainsbury's Extra. There's no ring to that at all. But little Waitrose, very English. We like Waitrose. And I bought that Carte d'Eure, or whatever it is, Carte d'Eure strawberry ice cream. <gasps> oh my God, that's to die for. And I had some of that yesterday. Almost half a tub, to be honest. <laughs> oh, come on, I can have a little treat now and again. I've cut out all those things. I've potatoes, bread, cakes, chocolate. None of this has touched my lips. None of it. Eleven pounds lost. Thank you. Um, Daniel says I've been to Frimley Toby many times, and you never leave hungry. Yeah, and it's nice there, isn't it? You know, you go down the road. If you come from uh, the M3, is it the M3? Yeah, and it's it's on the and you go down those and it's on the right, isn't it? And it's part of a hotel. Now, what hotel? Is it? It's not Travel Lodge, is it? Which which hotel? Because it's got a, like a hotel behind it. And you go you go into the car park and you go down and under the hotel, don't you? And then back round again. Oh, it's lovely. Oh, I really quite like it in there. Although there were a lot of chavs in there one week. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, we didn't sit there while we were eating our meals. But that they were sitting in like the waiting. You know, if it's really bu and it does get very busy in there. A lot of el elderly people in there because they get a cheap meal. I mean, how can you? You can't make, a, a, you know, a, 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 a roast dinner for five ninety nine, can you? You can't do it for that. It's such good value in there. But we were with Chavs and, and they came and sat on this table. And I, I looked at them. I said, I'm sorry, my mate's sitting there. And, and the, this boy glared at me. And I thought, oh, God, there's going to be trouble now. But there wasn't. There they were, you know. The great big oaf of mother was was there and and sc screaming and shouting and swearing here and swearing out. I thought, oh no! Well, and then fortunately we were called quite quickly, so we moved off that table and straight into the restaurant area. Yeah, it's nice there. It's nice there, Daniel. Daniel is um starving. Is it travelling? I'm not quite sure what one it is. Or pre I think it's Premier Inn. 
Look it up, Daniel. Pre I bet it's pre type in Premier Inn um, Frimley and see if that one cut. I think it's Premier Inn. That's right. He says, now I'm starving and I'm trying to lose weight. How much do you want to lose? What do you weigh, Dad? How old are you? And what do you weigh? And I will give you my recommendation. Chris Reardon, doctor and helper to all. Uh, Mark says, what are you eating? Is it dust? Well, if you must know, no, it's not dust. I'm not hungry. OK, so in the morning, Mark, I've had now for quite some time porridge. I love porridge. Specifically, I have Dorset cereals porridge with honey. Oh, it's a Waitrose thing. I don't think you'll find that anywhere else, lovies. OK, it's, it's in an orange box. Dorset cereals with porridge with honey. Oh, it's delicious. Delicious. I probably have more than that than I should. But that's OK. So I have that for breakfast with soya milk, unsweetened soya milk. And <clears throat> and that goes into it. I've got this little glass jug. It goes into a jug, goes in the microwave. Uh, two minutes, stir it, another two minutes and it's done. I must admit, and please don't tell my best mate Ronnie goes mad when he sees me eating because I tend to eat things what I cook them in because I live on my own, all on my own. You know, so if I'd done soup, perhaps in a saucepan, I'll take the saucepan off, you know, put a plate under it and eat it out of the saucepan. I mean, why, you know, why put it in a plate? Who's going to see? No one. But I do it when Ronnie's here as well, my best mate. He goes mad. He's in Bali at the moment. He goes absolutely mad. He said, why aren't you putting that in a bowl? What for? Something else to wash up. You know, don't need to put it in a bowl. Wendy, do you do that at all? Do you put all your stuff on plates and in bowls? I wonder. So that's what I have for breakfast. Uh, for dinner today, what have I got today? Oh, yes. Two Linda McCartney uh, burgers with mozzarella, which, again, you can get those in Waitrose for £2. OK, two. So two, two Linda McCartney burgers with mozzarella injected into them somehow. Oh, they're lovely. And I do overcook things. Usually stuff is black when I eat it. We do like a bit of black. I mean, it really is. <laughs> I, I overcook things. And I shall have uh, probably a bag of vegetables. I'm a bit lazy with vegetables. Uh, there's a specific one, again, in Waitrose that I like, and it's like a pot. And it's I think it's pound ninety nine. It's a big pot. And in there you've got peas... Um, sweet corn, broccoli, carrots. Is this something else? I think that's it. And they're kind of layered and they've got a bit of butter on the top. Well, I open the top, they give you two bits of butter. So I take one of the bits of butter out and chuck that away. Part of the weight loss. OK. And that, that's really nice. You put it in the microwave. Uh, three or four minutes, I think. Very nice. And that's what I love. And I love tomato sauce on the burgers. So two burgers. And a bag of vegetables today with tomato sauce on it. That will be my dinner. Very nice. A little bit later, I might have a little bit more strawberry ice cream. So that's dinner. And then for uh, lunch. And then for dinner, I don't know what I've got today. I might have, I've got homemade um, corn uh, chilli with rice. So I might have that today for dinner. Or um, also this week, I made um, a, a corn stew. I've got one of those slow cookers. Oh, fantastic. Slow cooker. So you put everything in the night before. Say I get in from work, maybe about two or three in the morning. OK, I chop up the carrots. I, I was I, I cheated with the onions because, again, waitress, they do bags of chopped red onions. Oh, love onion. Don't you love onions? Oh, I love it. I love it. It's like, you know, those blokes that I got the wheel along trolleys in city sets, certainly in London sometimes. And you can smell, they're doing hot dogs and you can smell, it's only the onions that you can smell. And I love, and you know, sometimes I think I'll go over to them, can I have an onion roll please? I bet they'd sell me one as well, wouldn't they? They'd sell me an onion roll. <laughs> an onion roll with tomato sauce. Oh, that sounds lovely, doesn't it? I used to eat, I used to eat meat. I gave up about, I think it's three years ago now, I eat meat. Used to like a hot dog in the cinema. Although, I mean, you, 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 I, I read this thing on the internet, how they make hot dogs. You'll never eat another one. Go on, type it in. How do you make a hot dog? So that's what I usually have to eat, um, uh, Mark. No dust. I don't eat dust. Just lots of vegetables and stuff. Daniel is 40 and 18 stone. 
So he needs to lose the, about the equivalent of a medium-sized day. <laughs> day? Sorry, not day, dog. A medium-sized dog. Well, for 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, you need to lose five stone. Yeah. I reckon you should lose about five stone. Think of your health, Daniel. One of the ways I did it was I kept reading stuff about diabetes. And before I went on a diet, I started cutting out sweets. Because often at work, um, if I was doing a karaoke night, I, I tend to get to places quite early. Uh, if I do karaoke. Oh, by the way, I've got Fridays free at the moment. If anyone knows anywhere that wants a, a Friday karaoke uh, or quiz or DJ night, then please send them along to my address. OK? Prices are, of course, discussionable. <laughs> All right? I'm not expensive. I'm really not expensive. Um, and I would set up, and then I would go over to uh, whatever shop's over the road, and then I'd go and buy two bags of crisps, or, or the large bag, because walkers do really large bags of crisps now, and a couple of chocolate bars, and I'd sit there and eat them all. Well, all that's gone. All that's gone. And the way I got rid of the sweets was to keep telling myself, you don't want diabetes. Can you imagine having to inject yourself all the time? Like, you know, it must be awful. I know there are different sorts of diabetes. Some you can diet your way out of. You know, I think that's a, that's a weight one. If you're overweight and you've got diabetes, if you if you start early enough, I do believe you can diet your way out of it. My brother-in-law, Martin, um, <clears throat> was diagnosed with diabetes fairly recently. He has uh, he was he was very close to it, I think, or or maybe just got it. I think there's varying levels of diabetes. I'm I'm not a, 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 an expert on that. But he dieted his way out of it. So now he hasn't got it. I, th I think I'm right in saying that. I'm not 100%. And that's... Oh, just a minute. I've got to click something over there. One little, little, little warning message has come up on the other computer. The, re the recording computer. That's better. Um, and whenever I... This is before I went on my Lenten diet with the no crisps and all that... I I cut out the sweets and chocolate by telling myself every time you don't want diabetes. That's how I cut out the chocolate and the sweets. Right? I don't know if it matters on the way you got overweight. Okay? So by that I mean if you get overweight on natural things like vegetables... Um, fruit and all that business. I, 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 I would imagine it's quite difficult to, to get overweight on vegetables. However, you know, once you start add, adding cheese and things like that to it, that, 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 if you was like completely, I gather vegans, there are very few overweight vegans, I gather. Because they only eat like plant-based things. That's it. I mean, I do as well, but I do have a little bit of cheese. I'm trying to knock the cheese on the head because I would like to um, go as far as being vegan as well. I don't have cow's milk unless I'm out, you know, because very few places have soya milk. So I buy soya milk and it all helps. It all helps. But that that's the way I, I managed to stop eating the sweets and the chocolate by telling myself you don't want diabetes. As soon as you look at that bar of chocolate, Quickly run through your mind something that you've read about diabetes. People lose lose toes and things and feet. They they actually lose limbs when they have diabetes. I think toes are a good one to lose. I don't know why. I think it's something to do with the blood circulation. But if you've got diabetes, you have to look after your feet. Very important. Very, very important. So that's, that's how I did it, Daniel. Um, I, I, I would say, you know, five stone, mate. I think you're 40. I'm 51. OK, I'm 51. I was 13, nearly 13 and a half stone. Now I'm just a touch over 12 and a half. And that's in four weeks. So I don't know if that helps you at all. You need to do it for yourself. You know, I don't care what people look like. Fat, thin. I can care less. Don't care what you look like. I'm just thinking of your health. Just thinking of your health. 
my um, nephew and his wife are big people as well. I don't care, I don't care. But I do, their health concerns me. That at such young ages, because they're like 28 and 26, I think. Because they, um, wonderful, wonderful people. Um, but they're, they're over, you know, they're over. And it does worry me that they're over at such a young age. Um, I, th I think they have a lot of takeouts. I think that's that's the problem there. Do you have a lot of takeouts at all, Daniel? He said, I put on two stone from stopping smoking one year ago, so now working on the way. Ah, well, that's... A, so, you, so you were 16. So 16 is still over. Um, too late now. But I would have tried to lose the weight before I stopped smoking and then stopped the smoking. If you've gained... I, I, I personally believe if you've gained weight because you stopped smoking, then that's okay. Because you can work on the weight afterwards, which indeed you say you're going to do now. That's what I personally think. You know, the worst thing you can do is smoke. I think it's worse than uh, people going out to raves and taking drugs or, or alcohol or things like that. I, I do think the worst thing you can do is smoke. So if you've given up that and put on two stone, then don't give yourself a hard time. You're working on it now and that's it. Good luck to you, Daniel. All right, good luck to you. By the way, how did you find the show, Daniel? I wanted to ask you that. How did you find out about us? Uh, Wendy says, I must admit, I do that too. What, have um, have I have strawberry ice cream? Carte de her or something like that. What's it called? Carte de her, I don't know. <laughs> uh, we need to, uh, it's doing comfort eating. Yeah, well, you know, it's one of those things, Daniel, isn't it? It's difficult. It's, it's difficult, really difficult to lose weight. Let me tell you, after two weeks, it will become easier. It's a bit like giving up smoking. Knock those items on the head for two weeks, and then it will be easier to leave them out altogether. Oh, you know, I come in last night and thought, oh, do you know, I'd love a piece of toast. Haven't got any bread in the house. What about a couple of biscuits? Haven't got any biscuits. You can't have them in the house. I don't know if you're like me, but be something in the house, biscuits or cakes or something like that, whoosh, box gone. As quick, quickly as that. I cannot have these things in the house. Idiot people. Oh, why don't you take a couple out of the packet? Oh, you stupid idiots. Don't you know? Can't do it. Can't, haven't got the willpower to do it. So if there were cakes down there now, I'd probably have to have them. Cannot have cakes in the house at all. Terrible. Terrible. Uh, Wendy says, no, I, no, I eat out of pans instead of putting stuff in a bowl. I've done it. Yeah, why? I mean, why put it in a bowl? Something has to wash up. There's no one seeing you, is there? I sit there with, with my sauce for the soup. Oh, vegetable soup at the moment. Special offer in Sainsbury's. Covent Garden. That's the posh stuff. It's the posh stuff. Covent Garden vegetable soup in Sainsbury's. Yes, the. Well, I accidentally went into Sainsbury's. Dreadful. Oh, nasty old. Tacky, nasty orange carrier bags. I mean, I almost disappeared into my shirt. Those aren't they tacky? Can you just imagine the embarrassment, boys and girls? And I don't know if you're like me. Have you ever bought a bin liner? I haven't. No. Use carrier bags from the supermarket. Always have done. Carrier bags from the supermarket. But, you know, a few doors down from here. I hope she can't hear me. A few doors down from it, I did, you know, when I was putting my bin out the other day, we got we got green, green, blue and brown bins here. Green for household rubbish, uh, blue for recycling things. And uh, brown for garden waste. Right. I was putting my green bin out the other day and I happened to happened to notice the neighbour a few doors down. Not the no, not the one next door. No, no, a few do well, not even in this block, fortunately. It was like, you know, the next block. Someone Oh, who's ringing now? Oh, it's my friend in Bali. It's my best friend in Bali. Just a moment. How exciting is this? Look. Good morning. Hello. Are you coming live from Bali? Are you live from Bali? Yes, I'm just um, on the way after. Good morning. Would you like to say hello to the millions of viewers? How many, how many millions? Oh, I don't know. I haven't got the numbers up on the screen at the moment. We don't worry about numbers. Ronnie is coming to you live from the Indonesian Bali. Good morning. What time is it there? Um, it is quarter to eight in the evening. Quarter to eight? Oh, I don't think they can hear you. It's quarter to eight in the evening, eh? Yeah, show them the pool. Can you do the camera the other way? 
There he is. Look at that pool in Bali. He's in Bali. Quarter to eight at night. How fantastic. OK, well, I'll speak to you later then. Oh. Unless you've got anything to say. Thank you. Of any interest to anyone, no? Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. How marvellous. Calls coming in from all over the world here at United Kingdom. Don't you love it? <laughs> now, where were we? I forgot what I was saying now. Oh, I just lose. I just lose the... Um, <laughs> just, just can't remember what I'm saying half the time. I talk so much crap, it's unbelievable. Uh, yes, Wendy, so I don't blame you, Wendy. Why wash something up when you don't need to? No one can see. No one can see. Covent Garden, bags, orange out. Oh, yes, that's it. Yes, I was looking looking in one, and I just lifted an, a, a bin from one of the people in the, in the next block of uh, houses up. That She had orange Sainsbury's carrier bags. They look so awful, don't they? Just dreadful. Even if I have an accidentally go to Sainsbury's, I always take Waitrose bags with me. Always. Always. Is there a Waitrose in Camberley, Daniel? Daniel found this show by following Martin. That's my brother-in-law on YouTube. And he mentioned you on one of his videos and saw his updates on uh, Jimmy's holiday. Chav, Chav neighbours. Dreadful people. Dreadful. Although, you know, don't tell anyone. I, I do go around in tracksuits. You know, when I'm out. You know, I wear dark glasses so that people can't see me. I am really, I think, a, a secret Chav. But don't... <laughs> Don't tell anyone that, Daniel. Thank you. Can we read this um, email out from Craig? Who says, hi, Chris. And I've got, I've, got, I've got to read something to you in a minute. Hi, Chris. Good afternoon. Hope you're well. My, and I've got something of great interest to you, Craig, today. Great interest. My football team, who I support, will be promoted today or by Tuesday. They are first in the championship, second best league here in the UK to the Premier League. My team is Leicester City. Oh, Craig. Craig, football, oh, how boring. Football, please. You disappoint me, Craig. Football, oh, it's made me feel quite tired even thinking of it. All those men running around on a field, kicking a ball and then kissing each other. It's a very gay sport, isn't it? They're all, are they all gay? Footballers. Dreadful. Oh, all gay footballers. Oh, and I see David Beckham's doing yet another underpants advert. Oh, please, David Beckham, move aside, dear. Let's see someone young. Tom Daly. That's who we want to see in underwear. Tom Daly. Who's the other one? There's someone else. Or Cristiano Ronaldo. He's got a few years left. We don't want to see your sad old body. And besides, you know... I'm not being funny, you know, modelling underwear when you've got teenage children. What do the kids think? Oh, daddy's modelling some more underpants. I mean, it doesn't work for me. You know, please take that sad old carcass away and show, me, show us someone a bit younger, sort of around about 25, 26. Who was that boy who couldn't sing in um, X Factor? Sam Callaghan. Yeah, he could. He can do it. Sam Callaghan. Was he about twenty? Probably a bit young to do it. Oh, we don't mind having a look at Sam Callaghan in a pair of pants, do we? <laughs> Wendy says, "Yep, I agree." Re football. Yeah. Oh, it's just so boring. Oh, my dad, God rest his soul. He used to have football on every afternoon on a Sunday, and whenever match of the day was on, he was a great supporter of Queens Park Rangers. And I used to... Oh, no, not the football game. So boring. Oh, they do have a Waitrose in Camberley, Daniel. I'm glad to hear that. Back to uh, Craig's advert uh, 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 email here. Craig says it's... Oh, more football news. It's been 10 years since they were last in the top flight of UK football. We've gone 21 games unbeaten... <laughs> oh, this year. And it's been really well. Oh. Sorry, Craig, it's just so boring, football. It really is. <laughs> um, Doctor Who rumours for season eight. With the newly regenerated 12th Doctor, Craig says, uh, there might be two or three Dalek stories. 
Oh, how fabulous. A return of Bernard Cribbins. We like Bernard Cribbins. I like him in the railway children. Bernard Cribbins. And of course, right, said Fred. Yeah, da, da. Yeah, da, 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 da. Right, said Fred. A return of Bernard Cribbins for season four, and an, from season four, and another old enemy returning. I've seen a picture of a demon. So it could be a return of the demons, a classic story from the John Pertwee era. Now, stay there, Craig. I've got something to tell you, my friend. I've liked your short weekly videos this week, Chris. Keep them coming. Take care from Craig. Yes. Um, the thing is, with the short videos that I do, and uh, once again, if you want to see my short videos, you can find those at youtube.com forward slash Chris Reardon UK. I was doing them daily. I don't do them every day now. In fact, last week I only did two. Why don't I do them daily? And um, the real reason for that, they were taking a bit of time. They didn't take too much time. The real reason for that is ideas sometimes. You know, I sit there and I think, right, I need to do a little video today. Don't know what to do. And you think and you think and you think. And you can't think of anything. You know, can't think of anything. And that's really why I don't do them every day anyway. It's, it, it's, it's, it makes your mind buzz. If I was retired, I'd be doing them probably every day. And they're all different. There might be something that's funny. There might be something serious. There might be a news story. You know, I've often thought, well, why don't you just pick up the story and read something out of the paper and comment on it? One thing I did the week after before last, I was very controversial. Very controversial. There is a new TV station in London, London Live. I've had a look at it. It's dread. It's awful. It's absolutely awful. The show is uh, the TV station London Live. I think it's Channel Eight on um, on Freeview, and I've watched a little bit of it this week. And it's just so amateur, it's unbelievable. Maybe it's just teething problems and I need to get used to it. They were doing a football programme this morning. Right? It was just, <laughs> there was like four people, to, one of which seemed to know nothing about football whatsoever. A woman with blonde, long blonde hair. She came across and they, they were just not conversationalists. It, it just didn't work. It was awful. And I was like sitting in this warehouse flat around a wooden kitchen table talking about football. What a load of rubbish. And the other day they had a load of people and they were talking about something else. Again, sitting around this wooden kitchen table. It just looks so amateur. This is on normal television on Freeview. And they were showing some old, really old reruns. At London's Burning they had on. And something else. And I thought, this is awful. It's just awful. Absolutely awful. Anyway, there's a programme going to be on there soon called uh, About Drag Queens. The only thing is, I didn't class them as drag queens. I classed them as trannies. OK, not all of them. Some of them. M OK, most of them. Now, difference between a drag queen and a tranny, in my eyes, a tranny is a transvestite. It is someone that dresses in women's clothes and goes out, and some of them, look, they look fantastic. They're nice people. I don't have a problem. And they do little jobs like sit on the door somewhere, uh, collecting money, walking around, meeting and greeting. Nothing wrong with them. Nothing wrong. No problem at all. I wasn't insulting anyone. Don't have a problem. I have a problem with no one. Really? No one. Unless you're a nasty person then I have a problem with you, right? And there are drag queens. Now, a drag queen, in my eyes, goes on a stage and does a big show for at least an hour, 45 minutes an hour, entertains people either by singing, comedy, it might be mime, lip syncing. Uh, lip syncing is where you would choose someone that you know, say, uh, OK, Shirley Bassey, and you would play her music with her voice, and you would lip sync to it so it would look like you were singing it. And there's some damn good mime drag acts that I've worked with over the years. So that to me is a drag queen. So there are trannies and there are drag queens. Some of them are both trannies and drag queens. Anyway, so this new show is starting on London Live called Drag Queens of London. And there was a picture of them. Well, I'm sorry, where are the drag queens? They're all trannies. Most of them. No, not all. Not all. Most of them were trannies. So I put on the Facebook wall about what I thought. Well, you've never seen so many comments and like. There were loads of likes, 
loads and loads of likes and comments. But the comments were, and, and I put in this post, you know, no disrespect to anyone, you know, important job, sitting on the door as a tranny, walking around as a tranny, something like that. You know, no disrespect to anyone, but where are the drag queens? Well, you thought it was World War Two. Some of them started and they were, they were very annoyed, very annoyed. You know, and the last thing I ever wanted to do was upset someone. But it was a controversial comment. So maybe I should do more controversial stuff on the short videos. Because with the amount of comments, and usually I might be lucky to get one or two comments per video. But on that particular show, there were nearly 300 comments. So perhaps I should be doing something like that on the short videos. I don't know. Just an idea. Now, we didn't get round to that story. I wanted to read you this story because someone's advertised a position in a pub. And um, I didn't get round to that. I'll tell you what, I'll do it on Monday's video. We'll do that on Monday's short video, OK? When I read you out this um, job that's been advertised. Oh, Craig, just before I go, Doctor Who, Spearhead from Space on Blu-ray. Bought it, watched the whole thing yesterday. Fantastic quality. Buy it. Blu-ray DVD, Doctor Who. Time to go, boys and girls. Thank you very, very much for watching and listening to the show today. It's always, always a pleasure. I'll see you uh, very soon. Don't forget the main email for the show is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. And for the uh, short videos, you'll find those at chris uh, uh, at youtube.com forward slash chrisreadinguk. See you soon. Bye-bye now.